Hello, and welcome to another Sunday School Lesson Review Broadcast for Sunday, August the 4th, the year 2024. The lesson review is taken from Acts, the ninth chapter, verses 36 to 43. The title of the lesson is A Faithful Servant in the Church. I am your host for this lesson, Minister William Gadson, and I greet you in the exalted name of Jesus Christ. You see, it is Jesus that enables us to get the Word of God out to you, the listening public. We originate from the Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church located in the Colleen Fort Cavazos, Texas area. Our address is 4201 Zephyr Road, Colleen, Texas 76543. You can reach us by telephone at area code 254-680-4378. If you prefer to reach us online, our website is www.greaterpeace.com. You can also communicate with us by email. Our email address is greaterpeacembc at peoplepc.com. Now, we at Greater Peace provide a variety of services for your Christian growth. A complete schedule of services and activities can be viewed on our website. So please join us in extending God's kingdom here on earth. I am your host, Minister William Gadsden, and I thank God for you supporting this ministry. Now let us open our Sunday School lesson with prayer. Heavenly Father, as always, I thank you for the opportunity to Spread the gospel of your word to over this media means that we're using. I'm thankful for those that are listening. I thank you for blessing. I'd ask, that is, that you would bless each and every one in a special way, if it be thy will. Continue to go with me, Lord, as I prepare this lesson, as you always have. Ask the Holy Spirit to be with me as I deliver this message. Help me to deliver it as it should be delivered, according to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave me the lesson, and I pray that I deliver the message as the Holy Spirit gave me utterance to do so. Thank you again for all that are listening, those that are listening, and I ask that you continue to help this program to grow, if it be thy will. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, for my introduction to a faithful, a faithful servant in the church, this lesson is about a woman named Tabitha, but she was also normally commonly known as Dorcas. Tabitha was a seamstress who lived in Joppa, but she did not sew for profit. Tabitha, it is said, was full of good works with her sewing. Some might think the story about a woman who did sewing for her friends is not worthy enough to be concluded in the Bible. But this woman... Tabitha had a, a gift for sewing, and she used her good, her God-given gift to help her friends, who were mostly widows with no husbands to support them. Now, bear in mind that widows during this time would not likely have money, money to buy clothing for themselves. But Dorcas would sew items of clothing for these widows. But one day, Dorcas became sick and died. The women that loved her washed her body and laid her in an upper chamber of a house. Her body was washed and then she was laid in an upper chamber. The custom for burials upon the death of, of someone was to immediately bury the body. But the women did not stop after preparing her body for burial and this is what they did. These women did not just mourn the death of Dorcas, they took actions to possibly bring her back to life. Her friends and those about her did not presently bury her as usual because they were in hopes that Peter would come and raise her to life again. Now they washed, in the meantime, they washed the dead body according to the custom, which is, if she said, was with warm water, which if there was any life remaining in the body would recover it so that this was done to show that she was really and truly dead. They tried all those, all the usual methods of bringing her to life and, did, and could not. They laid her out in, a, in her grave clothes in an upper chamber, which Dr. Lightfoot thinks was probably the public meeting room for the believers of that day. These women had information that, the, that Simon Peter was in, in uh, Lida, a town not far from Joppa. 
Now they sent word from Joppa to Lida, at Lida, uh, where Peter was, by two men, st stating that a very wonderful woman in the church he, there in Joppa had died, and they were asking Peter to quickly come to Joppa. Now this sounds awfully familiar with uh, what happened with uh, the death of Lazarus. I hope you recognize. They apparently believed that Simon Peter could raise her from the dead. Uh, they probably said Simon Peter could do it, but Simon Peter knew he couldn't do it. It would be Jesus if it happened at all. But if not, they were asking Simon Peter to come and comfort them in the loss of their dear friend. Peter did not come to them. Peter did, that is, come to them. when And, and when he came, the widows that Darkus, Dorcas had sewed clothes for it, did the following. The widows showed Peter examples of all the types of clothing that Dorcas had made for them. Why were they showing Peter these garments? They were showing them because Dorcas had made them for them. For them. They were poor. They wouldn't have had any clothing if it had not been for Dorcas. She had sewn their clothes for them, and this was her ministry. Sewing was her gift given to her by the Holy Spirit. Now, after they had shown Peter all these things and explained why they loved Dorcas so, Peter did the following. He asked everyone to leave the room. Then Peter kneeled and prayed. Then he turned to the body of Dorcas and said, Arise. Dorcas then opened her eyes, and seeing Peter in the room, she sat up. Peter then gave her his hand and lifted her up. And then he called the saints and the widows into the room that he had just previously put out of the room and presented a resurrected Dorcas alive and well. Now bear in mind that Peter did not have the power to raise Dorcas, but he prayed to Jesus to raise her from the dead when he kneeled down before telling Dorcas to rise. Peter, like all the apostles of Jesus, was given special gifts during these days. Uh, because Jesus had put them in charge of spreading the gospel to all the, unknown, all the known world at that time. These special gifts were given to the apostles, including Paul, as proof that what they were teaching and preaching about Jesus was indeed true. And these and many other acts were done to show the world that they were disciples of Jesus. And basically all these miracles that were performed, they were performed so that people could look and say, I want to be part of Jesus. Now, when Jesus raised Lazarus, there were many witnesses to the event, and many of them accepted Jesus as their Savior. So when Peter, through the power of Jesus, raised Dorcas from the dead, those present caused many to believe and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. When they were told, when they told this, uh, when they were told about the miracle that happened, because many people knew that Dorcas had died, and when Peter came, she was alive. And so Peter was uh, an apostle of Jesus, and he preached and te taught Jesus. And so many, because of what they had seen and heard, basically believed and accepted Jesus and were baptized. Now, this was the first time that one of the apostles raised the dead like Jesus with, had with Lazarus, now, God brought Tabitha good works. God brought Tabitha's good works back to her because, that is, she, he raised her from the dead because she was sacrificially served, she had sacrificially served others, and God showed mercy to her because of her service to others. Now, this is the end of my in introduction, so now let's get started with our Sunday School lesson. The lesson title is A Faithful Servant in the Church. The lesson text is taken from Acts, the ninth chapter, verses 36 through 38. The golden text is taken from Proverbs, the 31st chapter, verse 20. And it reads, She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reaches forth her hand to the, to the needy. Now, we can see that that describes Dorcas almost to a T. But this wasn't Dorcas when it was written because this was centuries before Dorcas ever existed. This is the words of Solomon. Now, let's get started with our lesson sections. Uh, two sections, a faithful friend, Acts the ninth chapter, verses 36 through 38. Second one, a faithful God, Acts the ninth chapter, verses 39 through 43. 
So, as usual, let's get started with a faithful friend. Verses 36 through 38 of the, of the ninth chapter of Acts. Verse 36 reads, Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. So you see, Tabitha was the name of a woman that sold clothing items for individuals, especially widows. She was a disciple, one that had embraced the faith of Christ and was baptized. She did many works for, of, for charity. She showed her faith by her works, her good works, which she had was full of. Now the name, name Dorcas is, is a Greek word for her name of Tabitha. She, Tabitha is a basically Hebrew word. She was a believer in Jesus Christ. She was always doing kind things for others and helping the poor, especially widows. Now observe, she is commended not only for the alms that she gave, but also, but also for the alms deed, which she did. Deeds, basically, the, she gave alms, basically, we were referring to financial means, but alms deed would be basically providing a service for those in need, like in the clothing and stuff of that nature. Now, verse 37 says, And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom they, when, when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. Now, Dorcas became sick and died. After death, the body was supposed to be buried immediately. But they washed her body and laid her in an upper upstairs room, as I discussed in my... Uh, uh, introduction. They laid her there and they made sure she was dead. They washed her with warm water and because there was, it was believed that there was a hint of, of life in her, maybe the warm water would bring them back to life. And verse 38 says, And for as much as Leda was nigh to Joppa and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men desiring him that he would come not he would not delay to come to them now the believers who were attending the body of dorcas had heard that simon peter was nearby in the place called leda these believers sent two men to leda to ask if peter would come hastily to joppa so that basically comes to an end brings to an end that first section there and now we get ready for the second check ship chapter, section that is, A Faithful God, Acts the ninth chapter, verses 39 through 43, and verses, verse 39 reads, Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him, weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. Peter left Leda and traveled with the men to Joppa. Now, if you will recall, Jonah went to Joppa to avoid going to, the prophet Jonah, that is, in the Old Testament, uh, went to Joppa to avoid going to Nineveh, a city of Gentiles, because he knew that if he preached the word of God, God would basically forgive them and they would be forgiven of their sins. So he didn't go there initially. But Peter did not follow Jonah's example. He went to Joppa to answer the Gentiles' request, which was a big deal for him because the, Gent the Jews did not have any dealings, even though Jesus had come with the Gentiles. But he, Peter, came. He didn't follow the example of, uh, of uh, Jonah. Now, when he arrived, they brought him into the upper chamber where the body of Dorcas was. All the widows were acquainted with, all the widows that were acquainted with Dorcas and her death was devastated, it was a devastation to them. The widow stood by Peter and showed him the coats and garments, basically that she had made, made for them. All the widows were acquainted with Dorcas and her death was devastating to them. The widow stood by Peter and showed him the coats and garments which Dorcas made for them when she was alive. And again, this was a big deal for the widows because they didn't, it probably did not, unless they had children living, did not have a means of support because their husbands were dead. And so Dorcas came in and basically sold these items for them they needed because uh, they didn't have any money, and, but she did it for them and she didn't charge them anything. Now, verses 40 and 41 read, 
But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, pre presented her alive. Now notice that Peter did not touch the, the, the dead body of Dorcas until she was alive. He talked to her, he prayed first, and then he went over there and, and he basically told her, her to arise. And this incident is similar to the account of Jesus raising Jairus, his daughter. Jesus traveled with Jairus to his house and was taken to the girl's room. Jesus requested all to leave the room of Jairus, the daughter, while he basically uh, performed the miracle of raising her from dead. Jesus took the hand of the dead little girl because he was not concerned with defiling himself by touching a dead, dead, dead body, as Peter probably was when he uh, was in there with uh, Dorcas. Jesus, he said, arise, and she did. The people in the room where room where, where Dorcas' body lay were asked to leave, and when they all had left the room, Peter kneeled and prayed to Jesus. Then he spoke to Dorcas after praying and said, arise, and she did arise. Now, just like Jesus did, Peter presented the resurrected Dorcas to them. Now, it, it was known through uh, verses 42 and 43 says, And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon a Tanner. Now, just as many believed in the Lord when Jesus raised Lazarus, many also believed in the Lord when the word spread that Dorcas had been raised from the dead, Peter stayed in Joppa for a while with a man named Simon, who was a tanner, and he was a Gentile. Peter probably was not welcomed in the synagogue because first of all, he visited a Gentile city, and secondly, he was living in a Gentile house. Simon was a tanner, was a Gentile, and as a tanner, he handed, handled dead bodies, and this was not allowed in the Jewish faith. But Peter still obeyed the Lord and went to where he, they had asked him to go. And basically what he did through the power of Jesus was basically spread throughout Joppa. Not just in that sick mall area, it spread throughout the city of Joppa. And many people believed because they knew that Dorcas had died and she was alive now. They may have come by to see her and make sure she was alive, but she was alive. And they basically looked at it and said, this is something that I want too, because they may think they were thinking maybe their loved ones might die and then they could call Peter and do that. But that wasn't the mean, that wasn't the, the thing that, they were, that John was concerned about. He was basically, not John, uh, Peter was concerned about. Peter was concerned that the word of God was preached and many heard that heard it believed and they accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior and were baptized. So this is the end of my lesson. This is the essence of the lesson as I see it for this Sunday. Now let us close in prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I praise you and I ask that you continue to be with me as I go through each and every one of these lessons. Help it to be something that I will learn from as well as those that are listening. Because I did not write the words, the Holy Spirit delivered them to me. So I need to look at the words that were delivered to me and apply them to my life as well as everyone else is listening. Thank you, God, for all you've done for me. Bless those that are listening in a special way. If it be thy will, I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.